Hi, my name is Bob Greener, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, today I am going to build a, what I would believe, will be uh, a strange radiation shield. And what I'm going to start with is this. Uh, this is a 1.2 by 1 uh, meter uh, polystyrene sheet, and it has a thickness here of 4 centimeters. And onto that, uh, based on the work of John Hutchison, who used to use aluminium foil around his active zone in which he did his uh, uh, effects, like uh, this piece of iron that then split and uh, uh, did this kind of twistiness going on, he used to use aluminium foil. And uh, John is alive and well today. So we, we do know that... Uh, Aluminium can uh, do some protection from electromagnetic uh, waves, um, but in the case of uh, strange radiation, which is what we're concerned about here, um, if you look at the work of S. V. Adamenko and um, Vysotsky, they used a, a um, metal dielectric semiconductor, um, and in that case, they actually had aluminium as the um, uh, metal uh, in that matrix. So uh, there we have two examples of um, environments where there would be strange radiation and in the case of the metal dielectric semiconductor um, detectors of uh, Adamenko and Vysotsky, um, they were actually detecting strange radiation and as you'll see um, we've, we've observed strange radiation on the inside of the Nova reactor. Now, th th why I'm saying this is important is because uh, we've discussed this. This is a um, one of the uh, fused quartz uh, um, reaction cores from the um, supernova. And if there's a ball lightning in there and it's outputting exotic vacuum objects and they're in dark mode and they can go through this, they can presumably go through the aluminium potentially as well. And that puts them out in the, in the environment. Now we do know from the work of uh, Alexander Shishkin that from his uh, rotary cavitator, water cavitator, and from the work of uh, uh, Leclerc, that these things can exit a uh, generator. And in his case, it was a metal casing, and he was observing the birdies and, and so other tracks on uh, X-ray film, uh, not too dissimilar from this uh, on uh, uh, in his experiments over the course of the last 10 years. So um, actually, whilst I was at Sochi, he, that he did suggest, uh, and, and this is also suggested by uh, Kenneth Shoulders, that thin films uh, or uh, or different um, impedance are uh, suitable uh, for maybe capturing these strange radiation particles, and effectively that's what Adamenko was using. So the film films that I'm going to be putting on this large piece of uh, polystyrene over here is one the aluminium, and two this is just uh, cellophane. So it's a it's a polymer sheet you use for your uh, food wrapping. These are both very cheap, uh, purchased at uh, your local uh, supermarket. And then I am going to do these in alternate layers, and then I'm going to hold them together with a, uh, or rather, <laughs> the cellophane is going to hold everything together, but I'm going to um, uh, alternately have on the top of the aluminium, uh, these washers and this bolt that will go through the whole assembly. And then from that, I will take some uh, uh, wire and I will then ground that. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing this is for the reason that, uh, you know, you're effectively uh, providing some path on which electrons can flow. If they are dark EVOs, uh, and I've suggested this before, um, if they're dark EVOs, they've either uh, had the electrons captured into uh, protons and become uh, heavier elements. So, for instance, you started off with uh, a load of uh, deuterons and you've ended up with some carbon or you've ended up with some calcium. And so the electrons have been lost, but it's still encapsulated in the exotic vacuum object. Or, as Shoulders observed, you get the electrons being shed. And if that's the case also, you have a depletion in either case of uh, electrons. And this is how I explain potentially how the uh, sun might be working, is that as it's building uh, um, heavier and heavier elements, uh, or it's uh, it's working with EVOs, um, 
it's, it's actually either shedding the electrons or, or they are uh, becoming part of the protons uh, and converting them to neutrons so that the sun remains an anode in the environment. Now, if the EVO is largely neutral, but inside it contains a lot of positive nucleons or unbalanced positive nucleons in a macro cluster, and then it comes along and uh, hits the aluminium, then um, this will cause uh, a desire uh, uh, when, the, when these highly positive nucleons come out, they want to reform the atoms. And this will, uh, you will need something highly conductive to supply those. Uh, um, uh, those electrons and actually uh, uh, actually having a ground source is, is not to dump electrons, it's actually to feed electrons back into the system to keep it stable. So you basically stabilize those atoms as they come out of the exotic vacuum objects. And I will discuss this with uh, various technologies that have been in the past. I, I, I would love someone to go out and find the key technology that I'm actually specifically wanting people to find on this, but it's a whole other presentation. I don't really want to get into it now, but it was the basis for my um, uh, uh, test that I did in 2017 with Suhas Raukar's steel rebar that we were, um, uh, he, he was using his uh, um, 2000 whatever volt, 200 volt bias uh, discharges through the electrolyte, the reigning electrolytes, a bit similar to the work of Bogdanovich. And uh, uh, my assumption was that this, this would leave a lot of uh, positive uh, um, uh, material in the rebar. And then if we connected that to a ground through a, a, a multimeter, um, you would see a, an, an electrical flow. And I expected the electrical flow to be coming from the ground to the uh, um, steel rebar. This is a whole other presentation that I will show you the video clips from showing exactly what happened in there, but it was actually um, uh, put into the, 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 I think, full edition of Infinite Energy, um, the, the summary of the data from that experiment, but I have it all on video, so I will do that at another time. But this, in my view, is one of the basis of cold electricity, uh, in that the, the exotic vacuum objects uh, fall apart, they're in an incredibly positive state, and they uh, require electrons, and in fact, heat, in fact, uh, uh, to reconstitute them. And so uh, what I will be doing is it, having these in alternate layers, and I've got a little diagram here, and so uh, hopefully this is clear enough. Uh, so this is our polystyrene sheet in grey, and then uh, if we look, uh, go into here close, we have our polystyrene sheet, and then we have aluminium either side, and then we have a, one of the washers either side of that, then the, the, the cellophane, then uh, aluminium sheet, then uh, washers, then this bolt that goes all the way through, joins uh, electrically all of the um, uh, foil and uh, uh, bolt, the um, washers together, uh, and then we have cellophane over the whole assembly, and this this is grounded. There is one other potential option to this. You actually provide uh, a bias voltage to it, but I don't really want to get into that. The idea is that uh, this shield itself uh, works partly in a passive mode uh, without being grounded because there's a lot of free electrons in aluminium being fourth uh, uh, um most uh, superb uh, electron, uh, electrical conductor. Well, I, say, I put that in a terrible way, but anyway. <laughs> um, it, and uh, it's very conductive. Uh, and in an active way by, by grounding it. Okay, so there we have that. And so uh, I will now go ahead and build this thing on the camera and we will uh, see um, uh, I will speed it up so you won't have to suffer the whole thing. So let's see if we can do this. So first off, I'm going to wrap some uh, foil around this. And it doesn't really need to be so precise. Um, we're not trying to make a work of art here. And I might just 
here's a piece of tape, you have some tape just to tie this in periodically. Just so it's a little bit easier to handle. Uh, there we are, I've got some tape here somewhere. Just uh, some gaffer tape here just to hold it into place. This is the right way to do this, but we can see. Give it a go. So I've just used a, a little screw there to punch a hole through this, and I'm going to put a washer either side. I'm going to have to go in and out this a few times, but uh, now we'll just put it on there. That's uh, not perfect, but I think you can see uh, what I'm going to try to achieve there. Okay, so now we have the cellophane wrap. Ready with this. I'm going to do this the other way. So, uh, let's do this wrong. I feel like uh, one of those wonderful people that wrap up your bags at the airport. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad to have one of those machines, you'd probably just make this a lot quicker. It's strangely satisfying to do. Now actually what I might do on this is put some neodymium magnets in some places and then extract those pieces of aluminium to see if there are any signs of uh, strange radiation tracks on them. Now I've got a little bit of problem here. Or something. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'm approaching the uh, foil here, the uh, bolt in the corner. No. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave the cellophane a little bit off this, it's not so important, just so that I can get to that bolt easier. Okay, I think we're about done with the first layer. So that's the first layer. Okay, so some more oil. Now, this was a 10 meter roll and there's barely any of it left. So one 10 meter roll uh, did uh, one chunk of, well, one set of two sides of that. So having done a bit of math beforehand, I did another 10 meter roll.
I think if it was much bigger than this, it would be a little bit difficult to do. So if you wanted a very large area screen, I guess you would uh, make several of these and gang them together. Now, with Norris Peary dying, using a microwave reactor, which transmuted elements, and with uh, one by some extremely quick onset disease, and with Ken Shoulders dying from cancer, and uh, Yerzy Bazatov in Russia, and Matsumoto, all these people were doing experiments that will have involved strange radiation. Now, Yuji Bazatov used uh, some thickness, a fairly thickness piece of, um, I think it was called polycarbonate. Um, but Ken Shoulders is very particular about saying this whole thing about impedance changes. So, you know, here we've got several impedance changes. We've got air, we're going to have uh, cellophane to uh, aluminium, to cellophane, to aluminium, uh, to polystyrene, and then all the same on the way out. And in between those, there's also air. Uh, so there's lots and lots of impedance changes there. So you know where, where this uh, bolt is coming from. It's over here. Uh, maybe we'll take that off for now. That's where it's a little bit technical. Think about this. <laughs> have to think about this corner a little bit more. Technically, it's still contacting it, but uh, it's almost like I want an extra bolt and an extra washer. You're probably saying, well, am I not using the shiny side? I'm not sure it really matters. Uh, it's showing inside somewhere where it's going through. So. Okay, it's clear. I can see where the bolt is. It's okay. Fine. If you have someone to help you, but uh, this just goes to show that it is technically possible to do something useful on your own. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the next round of cellophane, uh, which goes around the other way, as you know. Green tea. I've heard it's very good for you with zinc supplements. Would you like your bags wrapped for you? So I'm just going to adjust the bolt area down here to include the other layer. So I see I need to cut it on this side. Now I don't want to lose the existing washer that's in there. I'm going to put this down a little bit flat. Extract it. Uh, 
going to put one on this side. So I'm going to hold that with my finger. And I'm going to put one on here. I've got one on there now. One washer. Gonna go through. That's worked lovely. And the washer is still in place over this side. It's still contacting the layer underneath. And I'm gonna put the top thing on here. Now, what I'm gonna do, actually, is I'm gonna get one more washer. I'm gonna get one more washer. Haven't got it at the moment. And then I will, not necessarily with this bit of wire, but my grounding wire will be bound uh, between two washers and this uh, nut. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave that like that. So, nice and neat on the front side there. There we go. So that there, this hopefully is my strange radiation shield. There we go, uh, with it grounded, and as I said, it has uh, air, uh, cellophane, air, aluminium, air, cellophane, air, aluminium, air, polystyrene, and the whole same, on, whole same repeated thing on the way back. Uh, I'm just going to run a little bit of cellophane around this end to just make sure this is nice and tight. It doesn't come apart very easily. Again, that 10 meter foil, it's right on the last piece. So that works out very, very well. This, this is, a, as I said, it's four centimeters thick. It's uh, 1.1 meters uh, wide and uh, it is one meter high. Very, very nicely indeed. It would have been quite embarrassing if it didn't, but there we go. <laughs> Just a little bit of extra around there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this between myself and uh, the reactor when I'm operating the controller for the supernova reactor. Um, because I really don't want to be exposed much, if I can possibly avoid it, to anything that may or may not be coming out of that reactor. And I've made a terrible job of that, because I've got the uh, roll the wrong way around. <laughs> One more round there. So, thank you very much. Uh, that was making a uh, strange radiation shield. I think probably this cost, um, in addition to the piece of polystyrene, um, probably around about mm, $8, I don't know, maybe less. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.